As we get further and further out, we see the distinct spiral arms that make up our galaxy until eventually we see the Milky Way in its entirety. Every point of light in this picture is a star that could potentially have orbiting it a planet that harbors life. L recent discoveries made by the Kepler Space Telescope, among other methods of planet hunting, have found out that planets outside of our solar system, known as extrasolar planets, are actually pretty common. So there really is no shortage of interesting places to explore to out there in the u out there in the universe. Excuse me. We'll zoom out. Eventually, we see our galaxy, the Milky Way, the Andromeda Galaxy, and our local group of galaxies. Uh, now we have to change our perspective a bit, whereas in the previous side, slide, all the points of lights were stars. In this picture, every single point of light that you see right now is in fact an entire galaxy filled with billions and billions of stars. I've always wanted to say that. Uh, billions and billions of stars. You can see our galaxy, the Milky Way, is surrounded by much smaller dwarf galaxies. And like how satellites orbit the Earth, these smaller dwarf galaxies are gravitationally bonded. To and the other major player in this picture is the Andromeda Galaxy, the much larger Andromeda Galaxy, which is right now on a collision course with the Milky Way. So if you could make a video out of this image and fast forward it to 4 billion years into the future, you'll start to see the objects on the left hand side of the screen here start to collide and merge with the objects on the lower right hand side of the screen in a very eerie, mysterious dance of light, matter and energy. 4 billion years is a very long time and if we do not destroy ourselves by polluting our environment or nuclear Armageddon, you think about where the human race would have explored to and what new wonders we would have discovered by the time that those galaxies actually do collide. For me personally, I remain very optimistic that a large part of the human future will take place in the great depths of outer space. So. I just had like a nerdgasm saying that. <laughs> so uh, all of those galaxies that we saw just now are actually part of a cluster of galaxies known as the Virgo supercluster. I am not making this stuff up. Uh, the Virgo supercluster itself is just a small part of a much larger supercluster called La Nikea, which in Hawaiian means immeasurable heaven. The Virgo cluster is just one of the arms of this massive structure in outer space. And we're right here right now. But Lania Kea itself is still pretty local. It is just one supercluster among millions and millions of superclusters. And uh, we know that there is some structure to the wider universe. And this interconnection of millions and millions of superclusters in the form of a truly massive cosmic web makes a cosmic web of stuff makes up what is known as the observable universe. This is where our journey will have to end for now. Uh, we call it the observable universe because beyond a certain point, light and other signals from beyond its boundaries, oh, where's the right? beyond its boundaries have not yet had a time to reach the Earth. So we don't really know what's on the other side of that curtain of the unknown that prevents us from seeing further than that. Uh, so we are all right now in the, in the middle of all of that. It's a lot to take in and it is easy to feel lost.